Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Awesome Chat, part of AwesomeCast.net. We got so many things going on there, and uh, we're really loving the response you guys are giving us, and uh, people coming out of Woodwork for us to talk to. Uh, you, you know, you just say you're doing an awesome interview show, and just awesome people kind of just end up in my inbox, it seems. <laughs> so it's it's really awesome, uh, if, if we can use that word enough during this. And we got another one in studio talking about the Coin Op Hall of Fame, but real quick, I want to, uh, uh, you know, you guys go check out uh, awesomecast.net everything we're doing subscribe to this uh we're actually just popping up uh, as re- i'm recording this on itunes stitcher so look for the awesome chat on all those platforms as well and of course youtube and uh you can uh, look out on my twitter uh, at sorgatron or at awesomecast a lot of times when we have people in the studio we do like the periscope scope them so you can't guys can jump in i saw some people uh giving hearts already uh, on periscope and everything like that and you can be part of the conversation as well so today is one a little bit of crossover with our friends at insertcointobegin.com, a little bit of video game awesomeness happening here in Pittsburgh. We have with us uh, representing the Coin Op Hall of Fame that's opening as of this recording, just in just a, a couple of weeks. Here is uh, Chris Aiken. Aiken, sorry. <laughs> how you What's doing up, today man? good man how are you awesome awesome so so tell me uh, for for those unfamiliar uh, of course it's just coming out uh w- w- what are you guys doing there at the uh, coin operated gaming uh, hall of fame and, and museum um well what it is is um it's f- it's a vintage video and arcade um uh location mm-hmm. we have over 410 um both arcade games and pinball machines total of 410 machines um it's 99% of the vintage stuff. It's all the stuff you would expect, your Asteroids, Pac-Man, Defender, etc., those types of things. But it's also um, some of the rarest machines you're going to find anywhere in the world. We have a few machines where there's under five that exist in the world, and we have them, and they're, they're there to play. Um, we have an educational wing where you can learn about how the machines work, uh, the history of pinball, the history of... Um, of arcade games how it's affected pop culture how it affects science uh how it developed into you know atari and then xbox and then everything else that it that it turns into so it's a it's a big undertaking there's other things that are there as well we have a party center if people want to have birthday parties or corporate events and whatnot and um there's all kinds of stuff to do but let's face it people are going there to play games (laughs) that's right so so how did this project come about for you um well My partner in this um, is a guy named Ed Beeler, who's a local guy. He's lived in Moon for years. Now he lives in Imperial. And um, he he, um, has been collecting these games for 20, 25 years, you know, just as as they went. And he's he's as big a gaming guy as you'll ever find. And he used to have a little warehouse in his backyard, you know, where, where he would have his friends over to drink beer and play pinball. And what happened was a couple of years ago, him and I went to Atlantic City on a on a little short vacation. And when we got back, he just he just asked me, um, you know, he, he kind of sat me down. And was like, I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life here. You know, he had just sold some businesses that he had and whatnot. So I kind of looked around the room. I said, Well, dude, this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Let's let's turn this into something. There's too many machines here to just have hoarded in your backyard. And that was really all it took. From there, we, um, you know, we spent a, a year and a half getting ready and finding a location. And we did a Kickstarter to raise the initial funds nice. to get the permits and the, you know, the stuff that you have to do to do this. And, you know, we've just been chugging away since. So it's, um, it's now literally a reality here in just a couple of weeks. Wow, are these I'm looking at your Instagram. Are these pictures uh, from the facility with everything lined up here? Yes. Or? Excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a lot of space. I saw this. Is this an old shopping center? Or it, something? It's an old Dollar General. Mm-hmm. Um, the space itself is ten thousand five hundred square feet. Wow. So literally, if you can imagine walking into a Kmart, you know, you walk <laughs> into the front doors of a Kmart, but instead of clothes to the left and you know stereo equipment in the back and um, you know oil and stuff on the right, 
everything is video games. I like this cluster of Pac-Man games in the front of the picture. Oh, it's 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 you can't imagine how many games. I mean, I oh, wow. I'm an owner of the place, and yeah, I yeah. still walk into the place, and I my first move is just to kind of stop for a minute and look around and be like, wow. There are so many machines here. I love the uh, the Pac Man uh, uh, deal we have going on here on the floor. So oh yeah, some there's classic Mortal Kombat. I love it. Yeah, there, there, there's <laughs> like like I said, all the all the common stuff is definitely there. Mm-hmm. Any any common stuff you could think of would be there. Your Frogger, Defender, Joust. You know, those are all there. To me, what makes it special is some of the really rare games that are there. You know, as an example, we have a we have a pinball machine there called Thunderball. Mm-hmm. Came out in I think 1980, 80 or 81. It didn't it never actually came out. It was only prototyped. They made oh. 10 of them. And of the of the 10, there's only 4 that are known to still exist, and there's only one that is actively available to play to the public and that's ours. So it, it's that kind of stuff that I think I think the hardcore gamers are going to really love the fact that we have so many rare pieces and they're not behind glass and they're not behind a chain or something. They're actually, mm-hmm. if you want to play it, you see something, you're like, oh my God, I, I've never seen this before. You can literally sit down and play it or stand up and play it as the case with the pinball machines. But That's awesome. It's great. We had a, a one comment actually in the Periscope from Nero saying, if you guys have some Adam's Family, what was he said, Adam's Family or uh, Pinball or Spy Hunter, he's going to be there for hours. Well, then tell him to come on <laughs> down because I know that they're both there. So I've actually, every time I go there, I play Adam's Family too. So that's that's like, that's the number one selling pinball machine of all time, which is surprising. Really? Uh, you, you wouldn't think the Adam's Family of all the of all the things that the I Adam's think it would be would like be. the Kiss one or something. I you feel like think. I see that in every bar. Yeah, you would you would think it would be something like that or, or a bigger movie than the Adams family. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. Adams family is is the biggest pinball machine seller of all time and That's of course incredible. Space Invaders would be the the arcade one, but that's incredible. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I had some uh, uh, questions here from the guys from Insert Coin. Sure. Uh, I think he partly maybe answered this, but in general, why the Pittsburgh area? Why why uh, uh, where you guys are uh, ended up? Uh, well, again, my 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 partner Ed, who mm-hmm. owned the games, mm-hmm. lives here. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that that put a big um that that put a big um stamp on about where it was going to be centered at. Yeah. And then um you know we we kind of nosed around and and went to see you know different different locations and the price was good and ge- geographically what we're trying to build is not necessarily only a only a Pittsburgh thing. I mean, obviously we want Pittsburgh people to come constantly every mm-hmm. day every minute but um we're trying to build more of a touristy type thing there's not there's a lot of little arcades that are popping up i mean arcade gaming is definitely making a comeback but on this scale there's only like four or five in the country mm-hmm. that are doing it and you know 415 games that you can just go in and play really nobody's doing that so mm-hmm. we're trying to make it more of a tourist stop you know, and Pittsburgh was a really good centralized location that's close to both of our homes. And at the same time, you know, we can reach Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, Philadelphia, you mm-hmm. know, Scranton, Pittsburgh, all these locations, West Virginia, it's all close, close enough to where it's it's an easy trip to make. So and, that, that's and what not far it. from the airport either. Well, no, we're very close to the airport. Yeah. You know, we're we're, I think, four miles from the airport. So I mean, it's not far. It's it's definitely close to the airport, and but it's not like you know. I I live I live just outside of Cleveland, mm-hmm. and for me, it's a it's a seventy five minute drive. Mm-hmm. I and mean, it's not a it's no different than being stuck in traffic. Worth really. it for so, a day of playing video games, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and uh, we had another question here mm-hmm. from the Riz. Uh, he was asking, and uh, I will be remiss if I don't plug Riz Plays, his new Let's Play series, because he's, okay. he's on his second episode, so I'm helping him get that out there. Sure. So. <laughs> uh, but he says, uh, you know, do you think changes will be made with uh, uh, people who, like, don't bring uh, uh, change for the coin-op machines? You know, you know, we talk about, like, Dave and Buster's as, like, a card swipe and mm-hmm. everything like that. How do you guys adapt to the, that, that kind of thing? Or I, I guess people would probably come prepared for something like this, right? Well, or, actually, we don't we do not do coin or um, we don't do coins or tokens at all. Okay. What, what we've done and what we thought was a better model, just, you know, if you even just take the coin piece out of it for the consumer, which, mm-hmm. let's face it, that's a pain. Yeah, but what 
it's also much more of a pain for for the operators of it to keep the machines running. It's one more component. Yeah, and 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 it's really a pain to use. So what we've done is we turn all the games on free play. Every game nice. is on, and there's just a standard admission charge. There's either you you can come and play for two hours for nineteen ninety nine. You can come and play all day for thirty nine ninety nine. You know, there's no no middle ground on it. There's, it's more like it's more like an a a a, 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 a amusement park kind it of is. kind of thing. It is that that's kind of the concept that we took was was to make it in that level. And and by saying that, we also have family packages to make it affordable for families as well. You know, a family of four can come for two hours for thirty nine ninety nine, or for all day for fifty nine ninety nine. And Nice. You know, I mean, I'm sure you're well aware of Kennywood. If you, you go to Kennywood with a family of four, you're paying a lot more That's... than $59. So, <laughs> you know. And, are, you, are you looking at a season pass as well? Oh, we have season passes nice. available. They're... they're um, Unlimited play. There, there's a couple of them that are available. We have a couple different. We're actually doing them by true seasons. Mm-hmm. You know, summer, fall, winter, spring. That's cool. And um, I, they're I, they're I, like $119 for unlimited play. Play as long as as many days as you want, as long as you want, every day, every day if you want, for you know, $119.99 per month. No, I'm seeing or per, per I, season. I'm also seeing here that you have uh, Donkey Kong and Asteroids and Paul pos- Paul Position uh, like VIP and season passes. Uh, oh, yeah, well, those that 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 that's what they're named. The, okay, the don- okay. The Donkey Kong one is the seasonal pass one. The okay. Asteroids one is more for people that that they don't need an uh, they don't need uh you know a seasonal pass, but. Eight ten times a year they're in town. Okay. Sales guys, as an example, yeah. guy that comes into town, does business for a week, goes out of town for another month, comes back. With those, you you buy ten passes for I forget what that costs three three something, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. three hundred three hundred some dollars for ten all day visits, mm-hmm. so that you can come at your leisure. But that's over the course of a calendar year versus a, a over the course of a season. Mm-hmm. And then the other one, the the VIP passes are. Um, what that is is you you buy a pass for fifty dollars and you get twenty five percent off every time you come into the, anytime you come to the location. So, if you're not a real hardcore person that's coming all the time, mm-hmm. but you want you know you know you're gonna come five six times a year, it pays for itself you know and then some by, by saving at the door by saving twenty five percent at the door. Nice. Now I I've been to uh, there's a couple. Uh, a couple of places I've been to, like here in the city and other places where, you know, they do kind of the pass and, and, and come in and play the games. Mm-hmm. And I've been really disappointed in, in, in some of the places like that I've been to where like like half the time the joystick doesn't work. And it's like, sure. well, you didn't put a coin in. At least it's not that bad. Right. Mm-hmm. But still, it's it's really disappointing to be like, oh, they got Marvel versus Capcom. And, right. And the left stick doesn't work when you're trying to play with right. the guy and stuff like that. <laughs> how uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit before we went on air about how you guys are kind of fixing up some of the pinball machines that maybe mm-hmm. got a little jostled in, in, in shipment. Sure. Uh, what's, you know, maintenance on this has to be very interesting. Uh, it is. And, um, you know, part of, part of the deal between myself and my partner, Ed, is that Ed doesn't want to deal with any of the business at all. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to deal with this kind of stuff. He doesn't want to deal with the finances. He doesn't want to deal with anything. His passion in life is fixing these games. He loves working on them. So you have a built-in maintenance guy yeah. that's just on that's it. it. That's it. awesome. He's on site doing that. Um, both of our employees that we have outside of him and I are maintenance guys. Mm-hmm. And so we've got three on-staff maintenance guys at all times. And then we have you know two or three other yeah. people that we can outsource if, mm-hmm. if we need. Let's hope we don't need more than five guys working on machines at mm-hmm. once. But you know if, if there is that if that does happen at some point, we, we kind of have a plan for that. Cause they are aging machines. I mean, especially with the mm-hmm. pinball, I mean, there's so many mechanics that can go odd in there. Sure. I mean, I, I mean, it's very, it's like an ecosystem, right? It really is. <laughs> and, 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 you know, one of the unique things is more than, more than anything else, you really have to do preventive maintenance on a lot right. of these things now, right. because it's not like you can go and buy a new, you know, flipper, or a new, new board for a 1974, now extinct, you know, arcade machine or, or the or a prototype machine, machine that you're looking right. at. Yeah, there's no, there's no parts to right. that one. 
Right, right. What do you think about the, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, of course, you guys have the machines there, Mm -hmm. you know, but there's a lot of people uh, making their own kind of uh, emulators or their own cabinets or or the mini ones with the Raspberry Mm Pis and stuff like that. Uh, are, Are you into that phenomenon at all? Uh, you know what we we we've made some. I mean, Ed has made some in the past, and mm-hmm. I've never made anything. But mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I I'm aware of it, and you know, my, my brother has one in his basement. He has a fifty and one in his nice. basement. But and they're fun to play. Mm-hmm. The downside to those is always that. They don't exactly play like the originals, right? You know, the joysticks are different, or the or you know, as an example, if you have one that has Donkey Kong and Asteroids on it, well, the gameplay is different, and there's only X number of buttons, and you know, the buttons align different, so it's not the same play. Mm-hmm. And if you're if you're an old guy like me, you know, it doesn't feel right to play those on those machines i mean i get it i certainly understand why you would do a a 50 and one for your basement but part of what we're trying to do is more embrace the history of it you know try and give that old arcade feel you know try and give that feel that we all had when we were kids where we'd bike three miles to whatever the local arcade was and you know as a group and you know, talk smack to each other while we were beating each other at whatever game and, you know, trying to give people that place to relive it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I'm not really talking about it much, but, you know, we're also trying to give kids, the younger generation, a place to learn about this stuff. That's why we do have an educational wing in the place where they can actually see a broken down machine, a broken down um uh, arcade machine a couple taken apart pinball machines where they can see how it all works and we have the articles from newspapers in the 40s where it was outlawed to play pinball and where they had prohibition smashings of pinball machines like they did with with alcohol and um so you know we're trying to show that history and with that one one of the unique things that we're doing and i'll tell you this has been the undertaking of all undertakings we literally built a web page with history for every machine in the in the arcade, and we're putting a little code on each machine, a little QR code, like a barcode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, so if you walk up to any machine, or most of the machines at this point, but by the time we're open, any machine, and you have a smartphone, you can scan that that barcode on that machine, and you can learn the history of that individual machine. That's awesome. So we're really trying to capture... It, it's more, I know a lot of people throw museum onto the title of these things to, you know, get away with tax, whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, we truly tried to build an actual museum mm-hmm. because we want to celebrate the history of it. And, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's, I, I'm not sure how old you are, Mike, but I'm 46. And being 46, I lived on these games. I mean, I went up from the time I was 12 to the time I was 20. That's all I did with any extra nickel quarter dollar I had was played, you know, asteroids, Atari, whatever. I played all these games constantly and, you know, we want to, we want to keep that alive and that's what we're trying to do. That's amazing. So what, how has your response been? Uh, oh, by the way, Nero's in the, in the Periscope and he says he wants to go today. <laughs> <laughs> well, not yet. Not no. yet. Two no. more weeks. <laughs> um, so I, has there been, uh, well, I noticed, uh, you know, you guys popped up. I think it was in the Tribune Review. I saw the article mm-hmm. uh, about this. And uh, you're up there, you know, again, not you know, outside of the city city. Uh, a bit up there in the Aliquippa, Hopewell Township area. Mm-hmm. Uh, how's the uh, kind of community reaction been to this? And have you seen like a lot of little kids that you're bringing games in, maybe checking them out and being curious about it? Uh, there's been a lot of reaction. You know, mm-hmm. one of the things is, you know, we have the doors locked, obviously, because, mm-hmm. you know, we're not quite there yet. But yeah. literally every single day, every day, five to ten people are knocking on the windows, coming to the door, trying to get in. Because you got, what, wide open windows because it used to be a Dollar General. exactly. So So they can see what's going on inside Mm -hmm. and and they want to come in. So that's been really, really good. Um... We, we we just had, you know, we I think the article you probably saw was Beaver County Times. Um, I think so, yeah. They, they just did a story with us, which was unbelievably, it was featured on the front page, it was a full page on the entertainment section, and then uh, a page inside. So they gave us, you know, literally three pages of coverage because they got excited about the thing. And um, yesterday, yester- literally yesterday, I did an interview with, um, with the Tribune. 
And, you know, so now they're getting behind it. And these are all, these are all happening organically. These are Mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not like we're out there begging for for attention. You're not, you're not press releasing these guys. Not at all. We haven't even put the press release out yet about being open. (laughs) You know, we're, we're just, we're just growing kind of organically. I, I think it's probably helping a little bit that we've got a couple of, um, of 80s rock stars that are coming to the grand opening on mm-hmm. um, the 23rd and i think people are probably hearing about it that way but we we've been we've tried to be very strong on social media you know we we definitely have all the all the uh, outlets on social media and i'm i'm personally the one that manages most of it and it's i try to keep it very active and go into all the pinballer groups and go into all of the you know, enthusiast groups and let people know that it's there because mm-hmm. I, I think, and I could be wrong, I guess I'll find out in a few weeks, but, you know, I think that people are still hungry for this, hungrier than maybe people want to believe. I think a lot of people believe that, well, this doesn't have a life anymore because you can play your Xbox or your PS4 right in your house. I don't think that's true. I think people miss the camaraderie of going out with their friends and playing these games. And I think they miss the simplicity of the games. You know, I, I mean, I, I have kids, I have X, I have every system known to man in my house and I can't, I'll be honest. I can't keep up with some of it anymore. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm getting a little bit slower, slower and I get whacked constantly on call of duty and I can't do halo for <laughs> crap. I just can't do it. Cause I'm not as fast anymore, uh-huh. but I can still play a mean game of Frogger, you know? <laughs> you know? So, I, and I think there's a lot of people that are in that world that just like the simplicity of the games and they, they miss being, you know, I mean, you and I are fairly the same age. When you were a kid, you did the same thing, right? You went out with your friends and you you found a machine or two and that was where you were. For me, it was the begging mom while we're going shopping and they always had in the front of the shopping, right. uh, the, sure. the department store. Mm-hmm. And then I would get a Nintendo and she's like, why do you want to play the arcade games you have at home? I was like, it's not the same it's thing, right. mom. <laughs> it's not the same thing, mom. Exactly. So, There's more of a risk when you put a quarter in. You know, when you could just hit reset at home, not right, as right, much right. fun. But it didn't look one... as good. The hardware was always a little better. You right. know, the, you could doubt, you know, you know, you know I'm, I'm playing Super Mario at home, but there was Mortal Kombat in the arcade, you right. know? So uh, for me, it was, uh, I actually, I was in the smart class. So uh, we got to go to Slippery Rock about, I don't know, probably a, a 45 minute trip, right? Okay. For these, these like linguistics and, sure. and stuff like that. But I, I didn't even care how I did. <laughs> I, I didn't even care I did. I'm just like, I'm there. I'm like, I'm not as smart as these guys, you know, but right. I, I just made it by skin and my teeth maybe, but they had the best arcade, <laughs> you know, it had Mortal Kombat, Mortal right. Kombat 2, Street Fighter and all that stuff. That was my chance, like right. two or three times a year to, to, to do that. Right. Right. So, um, and the dog's going nuts. The dog, the dog's <laughs> excited too, guys. The, the studio dog is going nuts too. But anyways, but, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's that experience. It's getting out there, you know, and, and I know there's a, uh, uh, our, our buddy Chachi on, on the site he is an arcade a few blocks from where he works and he still goes down and plays sure those, so. absolutely but um oh I had another question I wanted to follow up with but I just lost oh your Kickstarter tell me about your Kickstarter experience we talk about crowd, crowdfunding so much on this mm-hmm. uh, some of us have tried some crowdfunding and, and playing with Patreon and stuff like that obviously you, you it worked for sure. you guys absolutely so, so how, how did that come about what you know getting to Kickstarter and, and kind of the response you got from that? Um, well, it came about just because, you know, when, when we, when we came up with the idea, we both had the, at first had the idea of we wanted to gauge interest mm-hmm. and we figured the best way to gauge interest was to see what people were willing to, to spend. And obviously there's quite, there's a lot of expense to, to opening something like this. So, we figured we would we would start a Kickstarter, and you know if, if we saw enough interest, you know if we did a Kickstarter and rose drove eight dollars worth of interest to mm-hmm. us, well then obviously maybe it's not such a good idea to open, you know to open a a business that needs two hundred grand a year to, to to live, you know so so we 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 came up with it with a Kickstarter we we knew some some specific things that we needed. Mm-hmm. you know, in order to start. And, and we did it, we did it very much like a business, which is what I think is where I think a lot of people fail with, with Kickstarter is they, they think, oh man, well, I'll just raise $5,000 and then I'll be good. Well, you, you can't do it like that. You have to, 
you have to do it with with a set agenda in mind. You have to have an agenda of this is what I'm going to raise the money for. This is where I'm going to spend it. And you have to communicate that honestly with your with your backers. You can't just say, I'm open in this great place as long as you guys give me money. Because the, nobody wants to do that. You know, everybody's got a great idea until it doesn't happen. Right. You know, so we, we set realistic goals. Um, we did the, we did our diligence as far as what you need to do to be successful with Kickstarter. You know, we we worked it really hard. I worked it personally on um, on social media and regular media and some radio stuff. I mean, I, I promoted it like... Like it was a product because it was a product. It mm -hmm. was the beginning of our business, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and, and it worked, and it worked well. We had um, I don't know 40, 40 some odd backers. We had a realistic goal. I mean, we didn't start with some lofty twenty thousand dollar goal. We we had a realistic goal of five thousand dollars, which was to pay for initial some initial startup costs and some initial you know zoning and taxes and you know the things that have to get done initially right. to launch a thing like this and um and, and it worked well enough to where we we gauged the interest and and we're like yeah this is gonna there's gonna be enough interest to go further so it, it, to us it was a successful venture now I would have liked to have made more than five thousand dollars of course but I'm you know I'm extremely grateful that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a whole nother thing. I think people are not grateful that people are willing to give them money. You know, and you know, I work hard for my money. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure mm -hmm. we all do. And to give it away to somebody's idea, right, is you right. know that that's that's a and risk. I've seen that, and I've seen that before. I, I've worked with some people on 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 uh, campaigns, and mm -hmm. you know, ones where it didn't have like it wasn't Kickstarter, so it didn't have the ceiling. So it's sure. like you got to use what you got, mm -hmm. you know. And they're like, you know, geez, I don't, where are these people at? I only got three thousand dollars out of this. I'm like, you got three thousand dollars. Yeah. Who just gives you three thousand dollars? <laughs> I can't exactly. give anybody three thousand right. dollars, you know. And you have that. That's three thousand dollars you didn't have right. before. Exactly. And I think people really need to set and and appreciate set their expectations and appreciate mm -hmm. the goals they did make. Sure. You well, know? And, and but the, and and I I do think too though the bigger picture is they've got to set realistic goals of what they're doing for the money. I right, think right. so many people fail on Kickstarter because they say they want to do a pro. They, they say, well, I'm going to build a garage, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it would be. But they don't say for what. They mm -hmm. don't say what the money is going to build why, on that garage. Why do I care? Well, yeah. you, guys, you guys look from why am I going to care about your project? What, is, mm -hmm. Am I somebody who would put in money for somebody else's garage, whatever sure. it is, show, whatever right. it is? Right, exactly. You know? But I also like it. It is a, you know... Uh, it, it, I like the, the taking the temperature. Mm -hmm. How much is happening these days where you know, Veronica Mars is the big example, uh, uh, the mm -hmm. Zach Braff movie. Uh, there's a Archie Comics we were just talking about on the show uh, the last couple of days is mm -hmm. doing you know a Kickstarter to relaunch itself right basically sure. you know a, a, maybe they don't need all the money but they want to mm -hmm. see is there really interest rather than putting up the money and it goes away. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, that, that, and and that's it. And, uh, and I mean, you can really gauge quickly. At least we thought. Mm -hmm. If we didn't, if we didn't raise our money, then it, then it, it was very clear that there was no real reason to go forward. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So uh, your VIP party is coming up for them. Uh, the VIP is for the is for the the backers. Although people can still there, we do have some limited tickets available on the website, which mm -hmm. is coinophof.com. dot com. Mm -hmm. And um, um, yeah, with the um the we that was what we gave away as as the 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 prizes for the prizes whatever the <laughs> wh whatever it's called on Kickstarter for the the different levels that they donated you know and and we're doing we're trying to do it all first class we've got a couple we've got Ron Keel from the band Keel you know the platinum records in the 80s that Ron's going to be out doing a little performance at the location and um and Billy Morris who was in Warrant and Quiet Riot and nice. Tough and a bunch of those bands. He's going to be out doing a little performance. And it seems and, like out, out where you're at, that seems like that would be a really good draw. Oh, I, I would think it should be. It should do well. And, and and again, the rock stuff is nice. I mean, I have 20 years of history in radio, so that's how I know all these rock guys to mm -hmm. ask for these favors. But mm -hmm. but let's be honest. Nobody's coming to the Gaming Hall of Fame to see a concert. They're, they're coming <laughs> to play these games. And, you know, I, I could tell you for as somebody that's not 
I, I personally am not an aficionado like some people would be. Mm -hmm. I, I can't play them enough. Yeah. I, and, yeah. and, and we've had some hardcore gamers that have come in, you know, they're, that are more or less friends of Ed's. And when they come in and look, they're all just like, I can't believe you have, you know, spirit or a defender pinball, you know, or, mm. or, or wow. done. Hey, he's got the defender pinball. I mean, I this place has some really, really rare stuff. We have the Japanese version of Space Invaders that right. was not released here in the States. You know, it, it was only released in Japan. We've yeah. got again, the Thunderball machine. We've got a working with water version of Fire Chief from the 60s. This game, it didn't last. They didn't make a bunch of them because it was the 60s. Yeah. And it didn't last because it used real water. So obviously, so the, so the maintenance is even worse. <laughs> yeah, it's even worse. But we have a working one of it. Wow. So I mean, for the hardcore, even the hardcore guys are are not going to be able to come into this place and say, "Oh, I've seen all this before," because mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. haven't. And, and I and I will guarantee, no matter how co hardcore of a gamer you are, you'll see something that you have not played before. Yeah, and you have some older stuff. Not as old as I, I found. I don't know if you've heard of this, but there's a museum. I. I was visiting San Francisco over the holiday, and mm -hmm. and I, I I like walked in a door at the harbor and, and found myself inside like some ridiculously uh, 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 coin, coin operated mostly mm -hmm. museum. I think it was called the uh, uh, Museum Mechanique, perhaps. Okay. And it was like it was like stuff from the 1800s, like wow. wood mechanical. You put in a coin, <laughs> and there's a little kind of uh, uh, marionette show that pops up. Oh, wow. like insane stuff! And I, I, I you know, I, I know you have stuff like that from the 60s. That sure, I, in my mind, when I think arcade and coin operated, mm -hmm. it ends in the 70s. It to oh, me, okay. You know? and, but it, it's interesting to see that there is that history, even sure. way. Way well, I know. before well, that, well, that's, most people don't realize, you know, pinball, pinball goes back to the 1800s or even longer. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you really want to get technical about it, you got the old pachinko machines that, you know, the, the Chinese and the Japanese had for, you know, in the 1400s, they had the old pachinko going on back then. But, uh, you know, here in the States, it started in the 40s. Our mm -hmm. oldest machine, we do have a 1954, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's in working order. That's ready to play. But, um, you know, I, I think I think the heyday was probably 78 to 82. It wasn't a long history, you know, because then obviously with the launch of Atari, everything changed. But, um, you know, it, it it took up so much of so many of our lives. You know, it was such a big part of our childhood. I think that's mm -hmm. why why people are going to be very interested to check it out. This is I want to show you this because this okay. is just so interesting. Somebody's in the history like this is this is some of the weird mechanical coin operated games. Like, I guess I got two guys here playing like a, a game race kind of thing. But oh, wow. again, everything is mechanical coin operated. This is in the facility like it, it's everything is made of wood. Wow. <laughs> <I noticed. laughs> that's nice. It's great stuff there. And there's <laughs> even like uh, there's even the uh, what was it not the rosy or uh, the the, the laughing lady at Kennywood that's creased me out by the oh, train. Yeah. They have a version of that that they had <laughs> and named something completely different for right. San Francisco. <laughs> and, and, and and there's a lot of about like, amu I think it's more amusement park based. Sure. You know, but they talk about like early roller coasters and, and early things like that. Mm -hmm. And then the, and then they have some, a couple recent arcade like sure. pinball machines that you'd find mm -hmm. in yours. It, it's this interesting like subset that that happens and, well, and, sure. and again I, I think for people that are into video games to see like this is what they did before this before right. pinball even mm -hmm. is 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 amazing sure so um awesome awesome i, I noticed i noticed in your you, you people have an opportunity to play a, a, a pinball with your guest of honor <laughs> yeah absolutely if they want to and you know with, with ron keel they can they can definitely he said he'll play anybody at any is he game a gamer he, he's kind of, you know what back in the back when those guys in the 80s in the early 80s mid 80s when they were making their albums mm -hmm. all the recording studios had three or four pinball machines in them or arcade games so when they weren't doing their bit when he wasn't singing when the guitar player was doing his piece they'd be out in the green room playing playing games so he spent the bulk of his you know 20s the same way we did mm -hmm. playing games and then obviously when they're on tour they went to the hotel well what does every hotel have back in the 80s but a little arcade. Mm -hmm. So that was what they used to do, either the bar or the arcade or both. So all of these musicians are really into it. And that's been kind of a unique thing that we're working on now 
for the location. And, you know, that would be one. I'll, I'll point it specifically to our Twitter. If people are, you know, like celebrity, they're into celebrities. I have a lot of reach into the, the rock world. Mm-hmm. And I've been lining up over the course of the summer various rock guys that are going to come out to the museum you know, because they have nothing to do between two o'clock when they arrive and six o'clock when they're sound check. Nice. So we're going to shuttle them out. And then if people are active on our Twitter, especially is the one I'm, I'm really telling people it's, it's at coin op H O F. We're just going to kind of post when somebody's there, you know, we're not going to advertise it. We're mm-hmm. not going to say, Hey, Joe Elliott from Def Leppard's here. We're just going to mm-hmm. throw a picture of Joe Elliott from Def Leppard playing some pinball and saying, hey, you want to come? You know, come. you should hit up some of the wrestlers, too. Oh, those yeah. Those guys, I, I mean, I, I had an opportunity to uh, do some stuff with AJ Styles, and I walk in oh, wow. and I walk in, and he's got the suitcase with his Xbox just up, and he's just playing Xbox. I was nice. Like, I was like, okay. And, and a lot of those guys are really into video yeah. games. Yeah, well, so put me in touch because I'm too. a huge wrestling fan, too. So <laughs> that would be – I, lo- I, I mean, I, I cannot go a week without watching – Raw, SmackDown, TNA, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, I go to independent shows. I, I, I love wrestling, so I, I would love to have the wrestlers We've, come we've had a lot of fun with some of the wrestlers we've had on uh, the, the, the video game shows because they're just into it. I was sure. doing some stuff with Zach Gowan, the, the, the one-legged wrestler that was in WWF right. 15 yeah. years ago. And uh, I'm, I'm looking, I was like, this guy has like Star Fox for the 3DS just sitting on his desk. <laughs> I bet he'd talk video games with us. So, right. And it was great. He came on and he's like, this is great. I get to talk video games and you guys aren't going to ask me what Hulk Hogan's like. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's really cool to see that sure. kind of crossover kind of happening uh, with even you know what we're doing here with you know, video games and wrestling on the network. So awesome. So uh, the VIP grand opening is uh, May 23rd. Correct. And mm-hmm. uh, the to the public, everybody else can go down there on uh, May 30th, and That's... they got the schedule posted mm-hmm. up on the website. Yep, it's all it's all up there. Um, if people want to come on the 30th, pro- it may or may not still be available by the time this airs. But there's like 10 or 12 tickets for like half price tickets out there on um, Living Social, which is linked to on the website. So if people want to come for 10 bucks for two hours, come on, go try it go out. Get those tickets real quick because they're probably not going to last too long, but you know please do i'm know? signing up for the newsletter so i can I, I i don't miss out on any of these guys coming in myself oh yeah so. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so go check thank you chris aiken for joining us it's uh coin op hof.com and uh and, and and go check it out i think i think we're going to have to plan a uh insert coin day out there so maybe the sorgatron media company party or something <laughs> doors open man awesome thanks a lot thank you man and uh and, and go on there go follow them on social media and follow everything we're doing again awesomecast.net uh follow us on the twitters and the facebooks and we'll be putting up information as we hear stuff we, if we hear anything about the rock guys coming in we'll share that as well mm-hmm. over on our social medias too so and thanks a lot for checking that out Check out all the interviews. Let us know what you think and comments on the videos and audio forums. Like I said, subscribe on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube for Awesome Cast, and so much more. And uh, keep an eye out. Keep an eye out for the Periscopes and join us for all the regular shows. Awesome Cast itself, live.awesomecast.net, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, you, uh, th- he has been our aw- uh, Chris has been our aw- awesome guest, and you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.